Hey everyone, Livy here, back with another video, and I'm doing something a little different, but this was actually kind of requested, so <laughs> I'm gonna just dive into it. So today, as you can see, this is a spread. This is a tarot spread. Specifically, this is a spread that I made. So it is called, to start off, it is called the Winding Path Spread. Its name has to do with the fact that this is inspired by a poetic form I actually invented. <laughs> I'm not going to get into the poetic form today, but I originally created it just so you have context to why the spread exists, is I originally created it to kind of meander along and really reflect and think about the details of a situation. Um, there's a specific way that it looks and everything. And because of that appearance, uh, even the poem, right? Like the poetic form, this is kind of inspired by it, but it's also shaped like a path, you know, a winding path that you would take if you were walking along. So this is kind of like going on a journey through a situation, if that makes sense. And I would also like to point out that when I transferred the poetic form into a tarot spread, I decided I wanted something that also mimics that idea about walking along a path, being contemplative, thinking about choices. And I figured, you know, what's funny, you know, with tarot, one of the first spreads that people learn is the three card spread of the past, the present, and the future. So this is kind of like the past, present, future, but on steroids or something. I don't know. It's wild. So let me push this up so you can see. This spread is going to cover a few things, right? You have you in your present moment, things in the past, the current present, and the future. And as you can see, there are also multiple positions for this. So I'm going to leave it like this so you guys can see. Um, I will also put these positions down below in the comments. And by the way, I will also, I'm going to see how I can do this, but I did make an image of this um, that I want to put on my community page. So if you guys want to try out the spread, do a hashtag, I don't know, winding past spread. Uh, I know <laughs> I had a couple of people in the discord um, request this one. This was, uh, who was it? It was Meg at Rose Honey Ritual. Ritual. Sorry, I cannot even talk today. Um, P BB, Pure Red Velvet, you know, some of them were like, yeah, this is, this sounds cool. Make a, make it a hashtag. So here we go. What I'm going to do today is show you kind of how this spread can work in action. I will be a little vulnerable, not going to lie. Um, I am going to run through, kind of some issues I've been having <laughs> lately and I'm curious to see what will happen. But this is a big spread, as you can see. So it's really for deep contemplative work. And the other thing with this is, as you can see also, yeah, it's a big one. There are 13 positions. So <laughs> if you are someone who wants to like film this process, I'm going to kind of recommend using a smaller tarot deck for this because obviously you want space unless if you're not doing this I mean for like filming purposes you're just like adding the spread to your repertoire I guess it doesn't matter how what size your deck is because you know you can just um make space accordingly but if you want to follow along here on uh tarot tube I might recommend just for filming you probably want a smaller size deck today I'm actually going to use this one. Uh, this is, <laughs> I don't get this, I don't, I don't use this for much playtime, but this is my Everyday Witch Tarot Mini. So yeah, I'm going to be using this for this video because at the time of me filming this, it is literally the first of September. So I'm going to be using this deck in September. Um, thought it was relevant, you know, and we're just going to go along. So it is a big one. Um, kind of stay tuned. I think, how am I going to do this? <laughs> Sorry, give me a second. 
w one of the things, I guess as I like shuffle, I can talk about this. With the poetic form, you know, it was something that I kind of wanted to do because I am somebody who takes a lot of, or I used to at least, take really long walks, right? I used to take a lot of wa long walks and I used it as times to cool off, to decompress. I would shove, um, you know, I'd shove in yield in times, right? Because I guess things are different now. But I used to shove in my headphones into my ear. I would have my iPod blaring uh, with music. And I just, you know, really walked off the things that were bothering me. But I noticed that when I would do that, it would follow this like certain, I don't know, rhythmic pattern. And I'm going to show you my shuffle process, I guess, as I talk about this. But yeah, usually, of course, when you're walking, you start with like, well, what led up to this? What were the chain of events that started one on the path? And most of the time, you know, you're able to say, okay, well, for this reason, this other reason, and this other thing that kind of complicated me, right? That kind of made it so that the situation at hand was exacerbated. And then you're left wondering, okay, well, what the hell's going on right now? And so then, you know, that also leads into a chain of thought of like, well, this thing happened recently, this also happened, and then you might even have this other person entirely who somehow is involved in the situation, and then they're there too, you know? And so when all those things happen, it's kind of good to just be able to sit down with the cards, really explore all the sides of the thing, and then figure out where to go from there. Where do you go? What do you do? And if you're like me and you kind of overthink, maybe this will <laughs> give it to you more straight, right? There's always times where you're overthinking, overthinking a situation versus tarot telling you, hey, actually, this is exactly what's going on. These are the things that exactly led up to this. And now you need to get your shit together. <laughs> so, you know, we're going to see what happens here. But as you guys saw, that is my uh, process of starting a reading. I'm going to do one last thing, though, where I pick the pile that has the most energy, the one that's calling out to me, and the one that wants to be used. And it's definitely this one. This one's second, though. Okay. As I said, this is going to be a big spread. I'm going to see how much of this fits on camera. And you know what I'm going to do first? I'm actually going to lay them out um, upside down. And then we will slowly flip them over and figure out how this goes. So let's see how much I'm able to fit in here. We have one uh, and, oof, and two, three, four, five six, seven, eight, ooh, and nine. So there's gonna be cards here that, ooh, they will not fit. I will go outwards, but 10, 11, 12, and 13. Okay. <laughs> Let me see how much I can um, zoom out or push up. Let me see. No. See, this is what I mean. This is a big, this is a big uh, chunky thing. And it only goes so far. So, well, excuse me as I zoom out and see. There you go. You guys can see most of it now. It'll just be like that. For the sake of this video, sorry that it'll be kind of more zoomed out. But I'll bring the car cards closer so you guys can find out here. But okay. So, let us begin the winding path. Let's examine what's going on with me. <laughs> Um, n number one here. Oh, I would not say this is where I'm currently at, but that is fascinating. Okay, 
I don't know if you guys can see. I don't know if it's zooming in. I'm trying to get it to zoom. Zoom. Zoom in. Maybe. Okay. Uh, if you cannot read this, this is the star card. So in my current moment, um, moment in time, reason for inquiry, I guess this is the fact that I want something to be hopeful for. I'm not going to lie. At the time of me filming this, um, I came off the back of kind of a shitty work week. <laughs> I'm not going to, I'm not going to uh, lie there. It was not a great work week. A lot of things were going wrong. I'm autistic. I was also, I think, dealing with overstimulation, a lot of stress. And the reason why I guess I'm doing this spread is because I want something to look forward to. But I need to, I guess, examine more of what the hell has been going on lately to get to that point. So first off, number one. <clears throat> but then how it began is, ah, now this makes some sense to me. Um, I'm trying to see what's best for the camera. Maybe right here you guys can see it. It's really hard because like I see it on mine, but then like the closer I put it, the more blurry it gets. So maybe about here. Okay, this is the Six of Cups. Uh, this actually makes some sense. So past one here, num position number two. Uh, I've been more nostalgic. I won't lie, I have been. I've been thinking more about... Um, what life has to offer me, the way that things used to be and who I used to be and kind of wanting to get back to that um, and, you know, just kind of go through, go through it. But sometimes you're not able to do that. Like you can be nostalgic and think about the things that you loved or used to love doing, but sometimes it's complicated. And so... If it's complicated, let's examine why. <laughs> what the hell has been going on? So the first complication, my card number three here, is the Queen of Pentacles. And this makes a lot of sense for me. Um, work. Let's be honest here. It's work. I've had to be the queen of my work. I've had to... Lately, make sure that I am on top of not only like my current finances, my life, um, my working job, right? It's also feeling the need um, to provide, to be a provider. It's, it's hard to, because, you know, I work in education and sometimes, unfortunately, when you want to try to serve your students, you do this stupid thing where you take out more of yourself than you should be giving because let's be frank here, even though you are educating and you want to give back and you're trying to teach kids how to be good people in the end, um, you are not actually their parent. And so it's hard because at the same time, you are their third parent while they're at school, but you aren't actually their legal guardian. So at the same time, it's like this unfair balance of like, well, I need you to be well adjusted, but I also need to put my own boundaries in place. And so balancing this energy can be, I would say, hard sometimes. So that is a complicating factor. I would agree. Um, so that's past number or it's past two, but first complication. The second complication here yeah wow way to at me or to at me deck what the hell <laughs> complication number two is that um for the past I mean is that I've been very moody and depressed <laughs> I've been very contemplative I'm trying to understand my life and a lot of the complexities and it means that I am also, at the same time, I don't think fully experiencing the world. Um, my work likes to say this thing of like, every time we have PDs and stuff and like meetings, they're always like, oh, one of the tenants they used to have was like, be here, be present. But I feel like I haven't been very present 
And part of that's just because like, I don't know, emotionally I'm at a period where I just feel off, right? Where things don't feel right. So it's really hard, you know, to break out of this like mindset and this habit. And so, sorry, I have like water. I'm going to take a sip. Okay, so no, being able to acknowledge these two things though means that you do have to come to a turning point. This is position number five and this is also, yeah, past four, which is your turning point here. And that is how, you, well, well, this deck is like ready. It's like gut, like punching me in the throat. It already knows. Um, Eight of Swords. Uh, then my turning point here is that I have the tools to get out of my situation. I do, but I have to remember that. I have to dig deep and I have to acknowledge that even though it feels like something I cannot escape from, I do have the power to escape. Again, that can be hard sometimes to acknowledge especially if you like me are in a situation where you feel trapped and there's no way to get out but the turning point is acknowledging that you do have the tools it's just somewhere deep and you have to get over that mental hurdle because of course this is a sword so this is about your mental state the things that are blocking you right so there's that but now we are going to get into the present. So this position, this is position number six that's going to be here. It is also present one. And it says what the current situation is. So this isn't like, it's different from number one because it's not your reason necessarily for your inquiry. This is objectively what's actually been happening. Just want to clear that up. So number position number six, present number one, is what your current situation is. This is an objective point of view. It's not what you think it is. It's what's actually been like going on, okay? And presently, ah, this is interesting. Okay, so I'm trying to, again, I'm trying to see if my camera will just, mm, you gonna focus? No, where is the camera bit? Doesn't wanna focus, cool. Just does not like the fact that this is a small deck, I think. Um, this is the Ten of Pentacles, okay? And for this Ten of Pentacles, assuming this thing ever zooms in. Nope, probably won't. That's okay. Uh, Ten of Pentacles. I've been very concerned about my legacy lately. I'm not going to lie. It's not necessarily that like this big the happy family going on here. It's not necessarily that I'm thinking about, oh, I want to start having kids right now and all that stuff. And I feel like I'm in a good financial place. No, no. The, the reason my life has been kind of struggling is because I am trying to get to this. I feel like I am nowhere close to this, what the Ten of Pentacles usually is, right? There's a lot I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to secure my finances so I could eventually have a more permanent residence in my current apartment complex. Um, I I'm, I don't know if I necessarily want kids yet, but I want my finances to be more secure. So, yeah, this makes sense that currently I'm trying to build my legacy, but it's just not, you know, it doesn't always pan out the way we hope. And I just realized my lighting right now is shitty. I am so sorry. Um, let me see if I can fix it. If I can't, uh, it is what it is. But give me one second. Okay, still a little bad, but not as bad as it could be. Cool. We're gonna move on. <laughs> this is uh, present number two. This is also position number seven in this spread. And it is the first complication about the current present right uh oh mm -hmm. okay I think I know what's happening here so complication number one for me 
And this makes sense, by the way, um, I'll explain, but this makes sense because the sun for my birth cards, I wish this would like, please, please for once, please in your life, zoom in properly. No, no, sorry guys, maybe I'll just have to have it more out here. Um, the sun, <sighs> complication number one is that I feel like this is a period of time where everyone kind of expects me to be happy and I feel like I should be happy. Um, but let's be honest, I'm not happy. <laughs> not, not all the time. And that's unfortunate. I would rather be happy. You know, I would. So this is hard. And I'd rather even like this sun card, right? You can see somebody who's like with their friends, but they're not... You know, I don't, I don't, see, that's the thing too. I feel this sun card is actually very profound right now because not only is it that I feel like I should be happy, especially in a time where the sun is still shining, but I also should be with other people, but I actually just feel like being alone. And so that's, that's hard shit. <laughs> Let's be honest here. That's hard shit. Okay. Um, I kind of don't like how zoomed out this is. I'm going to zoom in again and hope it fixes my camera yes but I'm just gonna move things along as I go because I just I just want you guys to be able to see these cards better okay so let's go into the next one uh complication number two here is also position number eight and it is present three this this is my second complication about this moment in time. Ah, uh, ha ha. Yeah. This makes sense. Okay. King of Cups. Uh, here's the thing about me. I, kn I know you guys don't really know me. You don't know me in person. Most of you I have haven't actually talked to besides maybe... Well, a few of you who might be watching, I maybe talked to on Zoom before or, or in a Discord. But um, most of you don't know me. I'm kind of, there are, there are times where I definitely feel like I am the king of cups in the sense that there's a lot of my emotions that I feel like I swallow down to make sure that other people feel okay and other people are happy and calm. That's a big thing with the king of cups. They are someone who feel very deeply, very empathetic, empathetic, you know, they they understand that life sucks and they've been through a lot, but at the same time, they still choose to try to be good. And I feel like I do this a lot, but unfortunately I do this a lot at the, de at the detriment of myself. You know, I always think about, um, I don't know how many people have watched this show, especially if you were living in America, right, um, during a sp specific period of time. I always think of that episode of Malcolm in the Middle where he used to talk all the, all the time. And I forget which family member. One of his family members challenges him not to talk for a whole day, not to speak any of his thoughts for a whole day. And so he bottled them up, bottled them up, bottled them up, and then the end of the episode comes around and they finally ask him to speak, to say something. And he tries to open his mouth, but he basically spits out blood. And it turns out that he created an ulcer in himself. Now, that's really dramatic. It's it's a funny show. I know it sounds dramatic, but it's actually funny when you watch it. Um, but at the same time, that same feeling can come up, right, with the King of Cups. So that it is a complication there. It's It's knowing... Knowing when not to hold everything in, right? So that's what can be hard. And then, though, if we get to number position number nine, this is the present four complication three to my present is the four of wands. Hmm. Now, I do, I think I know what this is getting at a bit, okay? Um, Four of Wands, this is usually a celebration card. This is usually like, um, 
marriage card even, right? But this case, it looks like it's an actual celebration. People are hanging out together. They're doing well. It's a good time. I mean, if you look at this objectively, I have some things that, especially with the new school year going on, that I think I have done well enough that I have a need of which to celebrate. And I also, you know, it still feels new to me, but like I got married in May and that's also created its own complications, right? When you get married to somebody, that's like, holy shit. That's like, <laughs> it's a lot bigger than I thought it would be, you know? And that also is a complication is how do you navigate marriage, right? Um, so this actually makes some sense here. I think that, see, it's funny because this card, of course, doesn't always mean marriage. But like I knew for me, especially examining the rest of the things in this, that this is one of those things that's like been getting to me, right? How to, how to do that successfully. Um, it's a lot to unpack. And I realize, I'm sorry, I realize I'm being very vulnerable. If you don't like this kind of thing, it's okay. I won't be offended if you click away. But if you like looking into this uh, kind of stuff, then stick around because we have four more cards to examine here. So nine was the last of the present. Now that I've really looked at my situation and how life has kind of been for me and what it led up to this, it is time to start looking into the future. So number 10 here is future number one, and this is what could potentially help me. And now I say could, and I leave that open-ended because I am not somebody who necessarily believes that anything is, not, is absolute your decisions affect things, right? But um, this is where I'm at. So, 10. Interesting. Okay, a Knight of Cups. So, I take this to mean that this is a time for me to fall in love with life again. Um, the thing about the Knight of Cups is that they are somebody who is very dreamy and romantic, they look at the world in this positive way. Um, they find people in situations that make them feel whole, make them feel loved. Um, and, or they're also people who just spread the love around, right? Like this person with the fish um, that's creating hearts. I think it's a fish. I can't tell. Maybe not. I don't know. But anyways, yeah. And the funny thing with this card too is it also has like the shark in the water. So it's like, <laughs> it's almost that implication of like, you're dreamy and romantic, but you have to watch out because danger is lurking. So it's like, it could help though to have more of this vibe in my life, even if the sharks are coming for me, right? Um, which I guess is true. I, I can be kind of pessimistic, so that makes sense. Um... Going into 11, though, this is future number two. This is something for me to be wary of going into the future. Mmm. Okay. Seven of Pentacles. This, I see this as, you know, there's only so much in life that you can plan and you can try your best to do. And to make sure is coming into fruition, right? There's only so much you can do. But if you, I think, get too caught up on trying to plan everything, there's definitely room there to miss opportunities, to, to miss spon spontaneity, or spontaneity, sorry. And that's true. <clears throat> I, you know, I am an autistic person who likes to follow routines very much to a T. But I could use to have a little bit more freedom so that I'm not always doing this, you know. So this, this makes sense. But then we're going to go into number 12. Um, this is what could be 
next. And this is, by the way, when I'm saying what could be next, this is for the most immediate future. So this could mean like within a day, within a week, you know, something that's going to happen very soon. It's not as far as some of these other things. It's not like something that will happen months and months and months and months from now, right? This is for more immediate times, like a more, um, you know, few, like very soon forecast. <sighs> oh, I had a feeling this card was going to pop up. Uh, three of Wands. And I say that because it's funny. At the time of me filming this, I literally just had a tarot event um, where this card popped up like literally the other day. <laughs> and But the funny thing about the card is that when this popped up, it said something to avoid. But what could be next most immediate is that I am going on an adventure. I am trying something new. Or at least going out of my comfort zone. And it's really funny in that way that it pops up here again. It's almost like, hmm, I kind of have to reflect on this. It might be, it's like weird because it's like I was told to kind of avoid this in order to become more creative. But at the end for like my energy level, but at the same time, this might be what I need. So it's very um, contradictory there, but is what it is. So this is future number three, position 12. What could be next? And finally, we are going to round it off with our very last card over here. This is the end of the path. This is future four, card number 13. How all of these factors could mean for ultimately ending, right? What could be the end result of all these things? If I factor in everything going on with me, if I take certain things into consideration, um, what'll happen next? Or what will happen, I guess? <laughs> oh, Tarot, you're so funny. Holy shit. <laughs> Okay, the world. Um, isn't that something? Isn't it always funny when it actually ends with the world? Um, I'm going to take this as... Obviously, this is the ending of a chapter. So if I finally start taking all these things into consideration, if I think about how my situation has gone and try to plan ahead... I will get to close one chapter of my life, go on to the next, and find some peace. And honestly, I hope I do that. I hope all of you who are in a similar situation also do that, you know? But, um, wow. <laughs> wow. Isn't that something? Okay, uh, that is... Yeah, that's a lot. But I have done this spread before. It's just been a very long time since I've done it. Because, again, it's a big one. You need to have the time to work out your problems for this. But, wow. Um, if you watched all that and are interested in attempting the spread yourself, first off, good luck. <laughs> uh, you could tag me in it if you decide to do it. But I hope this is one that you guys can use in your repertoire to help you really dive deep into the things that are just going on with your life, the ways our life meander, you know. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you guys all again next time. Bye!